Hello! Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner. Classics slash non classics Episode number 20. Well, I've reached 20 episodes. Go figure. This is the fifth episode reviewing recording, okay? Alright, you know why I'm doing this show? I'm not going to say it again. I'm just going to say it. In this episode, reviewing one of my personal favorite Spider-Man stories before Gauntlet. Spider-Man! American Sun. We're implied by the cover. It's Spider-Man vs. the Dark Avengers. And because of the fact that in this book they have Captain Marvel, well, the Marvel Boy, who was Protector, and now he's back being Marvel Boy again. Now, Marvel Boy resigned after issue four of the series. So this takes place probably during the events of issue one. So that's what I played. I played this as sort of an interlude taking place possibly just after issue one or between issues three and four, uh, two and three. So that's what I give it. And the book is written by Joe Kelly. He writes the entire thing. And it has Amazing Spider Man 595, the 599, and Amazing Spider Man Extra number three. I'm a cherry from it. Yeah. Now, the first story, now this is all American, this is a Dark Rain tie in. One of the many different tie-ins of Dark Rain. And this is basically set up basically from the last part, which had no one else fearing. Yeah, it just basically has Harry. It, this basically is, I'm just going to, and and this is the other book I have that has this. This is pre-Siege Avengers Tower. Yeah, no Sentry's Watchtower. After Siege, the Watchtower disappears. Even after the Sentry comes back, the, the, the Watchtower appears again. And of course, the Watchtower gets knocked down a couple times, but who cares? So, pretty much. This is a very interesting story. It's starting to be Wolverine briefly, make a brief cameo. And of course, it sets up for issue 600. So they had to basically have this one story to sort of... One good story before 600. So basically, they had this American Sunset, which is a really good story, my personal favorite stories, pre-600. And uh, Menace comes back. And this is after this story, Menace is never seen again to Origin of Species. And this is a, this is a homage to uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 21. I think it's, no, it's not 21. Uh, 22, I believe it was, yeah, where... The Grand Goblin was doing this to Peter Parker. So, when I saw that, I was like, okay, not a bad idea to have a panel to homage something back in the 60s. And, of course, Victoria Hand makes a brief cameo. She does nothing in the story. They fight. He answers his phone, and then somehow uh, Harry takes the proposal, and, find, and Harry finds out that Lily is pregnant. Yeah. She's pregnant. She, he was shocked about that when he met with her again. And then this happens. The Dark Avengers show up. I'm like, okay. So, this is probably just after they were first introduced. They're probably not around very long, so it's a bit surprising. So, this is probably taking place during events of the first three issues of the series, three or four issues of the series. Well, yeah, this is before... Uh, he disappeared from the team, yeah, he left. And let me view who some of these people are. This is Dawkins, not Wolverine. This is not Spider-Man, this is Scorpion. This lady here, that's Moonstone, not Miss Marvel. And yes, she becomes Miss Marvel again during uh, when Dark when Dark Avengers returns to the series. Where she puts on a new Miss Marvel costume, but she doesn't take the name Miss Marvel. She doesn't like using the name Miss Marvel. Heck, she briefly even headlined the Miss Marvel series before it got canned. And pretty much, uh, Nora Winter shows in the story. And they do something I don't like very much, where they have to rip off the famous Avengers statue from, from the classic Avengers. Yeah. No one else was a prick. Yeah, he's a prick. And he's a jerk, too. He's one of those businessmen going with anything. Basically, in some ways, he's sort of Mars Universe version of Lex Luthor. But he's pre-Lex Luthor, before Lex became Lex Luthor, the way he is now. Yeah. 
And, um, and of course, Hawkeye and, uh, well, Bullseye and Venom are basically doing whatever they're posing. And they, they have their own miniseries uh, during Dark Man. This is called, he's called the Sinister Spider-Man. He's going to be called Dark Man Hawkeye, which also introduced Bullseye's father. When he appears in Spider-Man comics again. Yeah, have some hookers. Venom, heck, Venom's even licking a woman on top of her head. She's like, ew. Yeah. Yeah. He does it as he just feels like it. Drops in the block. And Bullseye picks his nose on public television, which I think is quite stupid. Call it says Bullseye. Yeah. He's not a really good Hawkeye. Susan and Storm feels like briefly, but they have to. But some people think this is quite stupid. But they show her they show her from the feet up. She have, yeah. Doing this to a woman who has to be a mother. Yeah. Stephen says, okay. You're looking from her bottom up. She just has to do that. I have to do that because she's a woman. Okay, fine. I have no problem with that. Yeah, Bullseye takes off his mask as Hawkeye. And, of course, has some Florida with Miss Marvel. They show the American Sun armor. Yeah, they wait three issues in. They wait to the part three the issues of his armor. And the story is called American Sun. And uh, Lily's just kissing Harry because she just feels like it. Yeah, they act really weird. They feel that Spider-Man's posing as the real, well, this, the the Dark Avengers uh, um, Spider-Man. And he claims he's bought and paid for, which I don't know why. And the one way to tell this is Doc, because Wolverine does not have these freaking tattoos on his arm. Yeah. And, um... Me. And they have to do this ridiculous cover, just because men is a woman. Yeah. And the person who drew this should be Fantastic Four fans not be happy with this picture of Sue Storm. Yeah, they have to do this, just because they feel like it. You know, Winter shows up briefly. Bullseye breaks on his costume again. So basically, this is like the Thunderbolt story 2.0. This is like the sequel to Thunderbolt story that's appeared in the series. Lily, preg a pregnant Lily, uh, were puts on a dress because she feels like it. Tries to cure him of the of the stuff. She becomes sort of a new goblin in the way. Yeah, she looks like this. Yeah, and. Good, time's fine. Yeah, Harry puts on the Harry American Sun armor in the conclusion to this. Yeah, in the conclusion of the story, he briefly fights off some of the Dark Avengers. He fights off Norman. Very good fight, by the way. Osborn is basically acting like a acting like a big. Oh, I'm a big show off. Let's just show my freaking armor off. Yeah, Spider-Man's wearing his black costume again, and and they're fighting all over words and. Spiderman's acting like Grifter, wearing a mask like this. Yeah. Some parts of this story I'm not really excited for. He takes out the armor. And the armor itself is never seen again until the American Sun miniseries, which is after Siege. Which brought all big time stuff. And the Goblin Serum paper, it was not affecting him very much, so. <laughs> Nora shows up briefly. And then, uh. She literally reveals that supposedly that Norman is the father, and truth is, she has no idea who the father is. And he's basically probably she's like crying at the very end. But she doesn't like him very much. Because she betrayed the guy who really is the father of a child. This uh, story in here just basically just deals with, um, uh, just deals with like a, a flashback story when, when Harry was young. Some basic some of the it's a very quick story, and they show Lily as um, briefly for the last time in the book. I like the artwork of this picture here. Yeah, I like. I wish I wish the artists did this basically do this more often. And then they have a 70s variant. Talking about what happened in the book, and there's a sketchbook afterwards. All in all, this is a really good story. This is a story that any Spider-Man fan should pick up. 
America tells a really good story, especially if you're reading if you're reading Dark Rain, if you're reading Dark Rain now, and you want a Dark Rain tie-in. This is it. This is an unexpected tie-in because the last time it made Spider-Man tie-in to an event was Civil War, and that was three years prior to this. But this is sort of basically this kind of background set that leads to the issue 600, which is a, which is actually the first series in Marvel Comics history to hit issue 600. The first was Thor. Then it was Captain America, then Amazing Spider-Man, and the fourth was uh, Incredible Hulk. The fifth was Fantastic Four. Yeah. So basically, and as in most people, most Dark Avengers, the only ones to take part in the story is Dawkin, uh, Bullseye, and Venom. Miss Marvel does nothing in this book. She just there as background, flying, and Marvel Boy doesn't do anything. So basically, the only members of Dog Avengers to actually anything are, are Norman, obviously, Dawkin, Bullseye, and Venom. No one else does anything in this book. Miss, well, the Moonstone does absolutely nothing. She just stands there and looks pretty. And that's pretty much it. So all in all, good book. And uh, I'm gonna recommend. I recommend just getting it. You can find it probably on Amazon. I got mine from the library. So, stay tuned for my next episode. Hopefully, we have books good books too. Okay? Bye.